Hey everybody, happy Sunday, good to see you. Uh, officially in week eight of quarantine, getting started. Um, yeah, I think stay at home for us just finished the seventh full week, which was it would have been on Friday. Yesterday starts week eight, today I think is day 44. Uh, we're continuing to do it. Um, it's drizzling out now, luckily it wasn't too much rain this morning, so we are able to put out uh, put out the dogs in the back without them getting too wet, although now they just want to go back out and we're trying to resist as long as we can because it's raining and it's really annoying to have to towel them off. But anyway, hope everyone's doing well. Looks like we've got Rachel, we've got Brian, we've got Zach, uh, Tom Kelly. Hi, Dad. How are you doing? Um, had a good day today. This morning watched a uh, new HBO movie, Bad Education, uh, which I would recommend. It was... Um, it's good. I don't know if you guys know anything about it. Uh, it has Hugh Jackman and Allison Janney. It's about a, it's based on a true story, which it's crazy. Uh, where basically the like um, assistant superintendent and superintendent were stealing all this money from a school district in Long Island back in 2002. And uh, the movie's about that, and it's really good. Allison Janney has an amazing Long Island accent. Uh, and I would recommend it to anybody that's looking for something to watch. It is uh, very, very good. I want to watch that. Yes, Brian, strong recommend. It's good. It's like a tight hundred minutes. It won't take up too much of your time and is uh, really funny, compelling, and like I said, crazy that it is a true story. Uh, also had a fun, um, whew, what else? Yeah, did a fun time, played some games this afternoon with uh, with a couple of friends on Jackbox, which was fun. I did some crossword puzzles earlier in the day, which was a good time. Blew through the uh, the Sunday Times crossword with a couple of friends, um, which was good. And then also did a New Yorker puzzle from last week, uh, which was a lot of fun. Uh, I've been trying to do the New York Times crossword every day. And uh, the month of April, I've done every puzzle on the day. So I have a nice little streak going there. Uh, but otherwise, excited just to uh, unwind on a Sunday night and have a cocktail. Today we're going to do the French 75, which is a, I would definitely uh, put it in the canon as a classic cocktail. It um, predates Prohibition, and uh, I would say its first published recipe was in the early 1920s. Um, there's a, a sort of recipe cocktail book, 1922. Uh, that has it listed as the 75. And uh, really since since those early days of this cocktail, it was always a cocktail that featured gin, has some lemon juice, and it has champagne. Um, and then the original recipes also had a little bit of grenadine, I guess for sweetener and some color, and some apple brandy. And you know, as the, the drink has evolved a little bit over time, um, we lose the grenadine, we lose the apple brandy, and we're left with just a uh, really delicious um, gin-based but lighter uh, champagne-accented cocktail, which uh, is really nice. And it's Helen has declared it her favorite cocktail uh, of all time, so uh, I'm excited to make a couple for me and her to enjoy. And there's a couple ways that you can go with this cocktail when you make it. Um, you have to first decide on size. So basically you're gonna think, it, do you wanna use the, the one ounce of gin and have it be more a little like a dainty, warming up for the evening type of cocktail? Or you can go bigger and go uh, two ounces of gin and just have a, a scale everything up and make it more of a substantial, like this is what I'm drinking tonight type of cocktail. And uh, I'm gonna do the former today. I'm just gonna make a nice light, you know, we're easing into the evening, it's five o'clock. Uh, we're just here to have a drink and uh, it's gonna be nice. It's not gonna be a huge drink It's I'm, I'm thinking this is something that you'd want to serve if we weren't forced to stay at home and have quarantines and you have some friends over um, For a dinner party or, or you know for a house party and then at the beginning of the evening you sort of kick things off with a nice little uh, sparkly cocktail um, So that's what I'm envisioning. That's my vision for this cocktail um, so let's get making it. 
I am going to start, as I often do, with uh, juicing the lime. Now, I'm just going to do, since again, I'm making sort of the scaled down smaller version that I'm just going to put in these two little coupe glasses. Um, I think just one lemon should do it for me for this. It might even be more than I need. But I'm going to juice one, and each of the cocktails is going to have half an ounce of lemon juice. So that means for the two cocktails, I need a total of one ounce. And a good sized lemon will get you probably twice that. Um, but, you know, we've got all these lemons. Helen made these, actually I have them right here. Helen yesterday made these amazing lemon bars with a lot of our lemons. It's one of her, her specialties, um, which I just dumped onto the counter in an effort to show them off to you but I'm sure you can see there that they are uh, wonderful, delicious lemon bars. They're so good, really tart, lemony, sweet. One of my favorite desserts that she makes. Um, and something she uh, used to always make for her grandfather. Her grandfather passed away um, about a year ago, but that was one of the desserts whenever we had him over for like Easter dinner or that sort of thing, Helen would make these and he loved them, so. Uh, nice memory there. And it's all right, Rachel. They're fine. They're, they came right up. I keep the counter nice and clean, so we're good to go. All right. So I've got my lemon juice, and I'm going to put my drink in this glass. Now I'm going to be doubling everything, like I said. i um, going to use a French gin. Uh, traditional would be like a nice London dry gin. A Tanqueray uh, would be a good choice, but since it's a French 75, I'm going with this Citadel French gin uh, that Helen likes to keep on hand. Um, I will say the 75 is actually an artillery reference. Um, so this was a drink that came out either during or right after World War I, and the 75 refers to the 75 millimeter um, guns, the artillery guns that uh, the French army was uh, producing and using in World War I. Um, and so this is sort of an ode <laughs> in a strange way to that particular uh, piece of artillery that was, you know, lightweight, could move it around. It was sort of like an, an advancement, uh, they thought, in military technology and gave them an advantage uh, in World War I on the battlefield. So uh, one ounce for, of gin for each of the drinks. Which again, I am doubling. And then we're gonna do half an ounce of the lemon juice, which again, we're gonna double. And then uh, half an ounce of the simple syrup that I have here, which again, I'm going to double. Um, so you really, you want the gin to come through. This is all gonna be diluted some with the champagne also. So we've got a lot of different competing things happening. So you don't wanna to go too heavy on the lemon juice, too heavy on the sweetener. You've got a lot of stuff um, that's gonna be coming through. So we've got our lemon juice, we've got our gin, and we've got our simple syrup. Now we are going to uh, add in our ice and we're gonna shake this up. We got Rachel loves lemon bars. Yes, me too. Me too. One of my favorite desserts. Colleen in the chat. Colleen, I was just texting with her. She also watched uh, Bad Education and gave it thumbs up. So again, if any of you are on the fence, um, you have our endorsement. You know, essentially what, similar to what I would do if I were making a uh, Tom Collins, right? Which is just making like a nice ginny lemonade. Uh, we've got our simple syrup, our lemons, and our gin. And if I were making a Tom Collins, I'd pour that into a nice tall glass with some ice and then top it off with some club soda and have a nice long drink 
uh, for a hot summer's day. Um, but that's not what we're making. We're making a much classier, more refined drink that is going to sub out the soda water for champagne, for the champagne, which is going to be quite nice. Uh, so let me just grab my strainer, and then I'm also going to grab, give a quick wipe to my lemon bar mark counter here. Don't mind that. Get all those crumbs out of there. All right. So we've got these two nice um, dainty classy coops. And a double strain. This is going to get our Hawthorne strainer. It's going to get all the ice out. And then my fine mesh strainer is going to keep out any of those like ice chips that chipped off or broke off, any lemon pulp. And in case any lemon seeds made their way in too, this will catch all of those. And I'm just going to divide this up between these two coops. So we have our base here. Um, this would be quite yummy if you just wanted to drink it like that. Um, although it would be a very small drink. And we are going to make it even nicer with our champagne. So never a bad time to open a bottle of champagne. We always try to keep a bottle chilling in the fridge just because we like what that says. You never know when uh, you'll want to or need to or something will warrant opening some bubbly. Plus Helen just loves champagne, she drinks all the time. I think it's probably her drink of choice generally. Maybe sometime soon we'll do a, uh, a, a saber opening of the champagne, but I don't think that tonight is the night for that. So to quarantine in three, two, one. Be quarantine. And then in theory, you're just gonna add on about an ounce of the champagne to top it off. Again, we don't wanna just like totally dilute it and end up with a glass of champagne that just tastes a little lemony or a little ginny or, you know, we really want all of those original flavors to come through. So it's gonna top it off with about an ounce in each to give it some nice effervescence and get the champagne in. And then you could garnish this with just a uh, lemon peel, you know, express some lemon oils. I don't even think it needs that. I think just like this, it is perfect. And there we have the French 75. Cheers. Mm. So yeah, I, can, I, I really think I can get the botanicals from the gin that come through by not uh, making a huge drink that has a ton of champagne in it to uh, overpower those flavors. Mm. Busy, champagne-y, little lemony, little sweet. This is the type of drink that just a great way to kick off the evening. Uh, and, you know, if someone was making them, you could make a ton of these. Colleen in the chat asks, where is Helen? She's here, she's alive, I promise. Um, she is in the living room, I, begin, I believe, playing Animal Crossing, the uh, Nintendo Switch game that she's been obsessed with over the last few weeks uh, since we've got it. So I will deliver her French 75 to her on the couch in a moment, um, but I'm enjoying the first sips by myself. Quite nice. All right, delicious, light, classic cocktail, uh, the French 75. I think it's a lot of fun to make because uh, it's you know fairly simple. Shake it up. It's got the champagne on top. Uh, it just can't really go wrong at all. 
with that. And uh, it is very nice. Oh, Ben says she should friend me. I will let her know. I will let her know. I'm sure she would uh, love that. We'll figure that out. I don't really know the mechanics of the friending and the island visiting and all of that and Animal Crossing, but um, she's been hard at work on her island, which she has named Pandemica. And uh, it's fun watching her uh, move around. The game is adorable. Just very, very cute. For those of you who don't know, it's basically a... You get a little island and you have to like harvest the materials and then you can build stuff and create your own little house and um, that sort of thing. Much more complex than that, but a lot of fun. And that, Colleen, is what Animal Crossing is. It's a fun Nintendo game. It's five o'clock, why not have a drink with me? Cheers, everyone. Have a great Sunday night. See you back here tomorrow.